Hey everyone, welcome back to Daily Devotions. Pastor Steve here walking with you in God's Word. We're in Colossians chapter 3, Paul's letter to this baby church, being able to uh, celebrate them, warn them, and then teach them. And that's what we get in Colossians chapter 3. I'm a little bit anxious right now um, because I've just spent the last 15 to 20 minutes, (laughs) um, this is coming to you maybe a little bit later uh, than usual, uh, because I used my Bible yesterday and I have the knack for putting things down and then not finding them, water bottles very much included. Um, but I put my Bible somewhere around campus and I can't find it. So if you're reading this and you see a black, um, well-used Bible, <laughs> uh, that's mine. You can drop it off in my office. But anyways, um, I do have a Bible and so we're going to read together Colossians chapter 3. Um, and. Uh, the, the title of this is Rules for Holy Living, because he's just came through, as I just kind of uh, put it before, celebrate of the gospel that's been given to you, uh, that what Christ has done for you, who Christ is in our life. He's the king, he's supreme, he is everything. Um, and so be careful, chapter 2, be careful of, against these tax, these philosophies, these secret mysteries that are adding to Christ, because Christ is all. Christ is everything. He's enough. And so what does that look like if he's enough? What does that look like in our daily holy living, a set-apart living? You've been called by the gospel not to just live a life and that you can just go and live however you want because you're going to be forgiven. That's liberation. That's uh, wrongful liberation. And uh, Paul speaks to that in the uh, letter to the Romans, because that's how they were living. Um, and don't don't live like the Nicolaitans, um, as it says, and they were just free. I can do whatever I want because then I can ask for forgiveness. That's not how Christ has apportioned it. So verse, I mean, chapter three, verse one, really speaks towards the beginning of this. What does it look like for holy living? What does it look like within the households of holy living of people chosen by the gospel. So it's very practical here today. So uh, let's read in. It says, Since then, going back, now coming forward, since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. And what, a, what a great promise that is. That's something that we can cling to. You know, Hebrews puts it this way, I mean, it's a, a sure and certain hope of everlasting life. It's not a question. And this is where it says here, as we are in Christ, as he comes again in glory, we are in glory. There's not a question of the heavenly mansions for us. There's not a, a, a wonderment of glory at the end of life into everlasting life because we are in Christ, and he is in that glory. Verse 5, put to death, therefore, kill it, as it's saying here, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed. Quite interesting, that list, isn't it? Take those first three, for instance, sexual immorality, impurity, and lust. Those are all, as Ephesians 5 would say, against the body, against your own personal body. So it's, some, it's, it's saying that it's not out of your control. It's saying that these sins, these temptations, these earthly nature, human nature, sinful things of us, we actually can go after because they're of us. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. First three are for your body. Evil desires and greed. Even those last two of being able to have that curb of a check on the things that I do, not the things that are happening to me, which is idolatry. Verse 6, because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived, but now you must rid yourselves of all such things as these. Anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices, and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Here, there is no Greek or Jew, talking about the kingdom of the Son, right? Here, there is no Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. 
Paul is getting at here that all of these temptations, all of these sins, all of these, uh, frankly, orders and divisions and all these titles, put them away. Those are all self-indulgent. Those are all actually looking to the self. So if you were a Greek, you would be proud to be a Greek. And that's fine to be proud to be a Greek, but does it get in the way of people knowing that you're in Christ? A way that they were known as the chosen people, circumcision. This covenant with God's people. Now there's no circumcision or circumcision because that's not something that's going to separate you. We are in Christ. A Gentile is this speaking to here. A slave or free. No. We're not doing those titles. We're not doing those sins. We're not doing we are in Christ. That is our uniting. Therefore, verse 12, as God's chosen people, all united together, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with the opposite of temptation and sin and earthly nature. The things of God. Compassion kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. What is love? God is love. We get to read that in 1 John. But Paul takes that in and being able to say, there is one thing that unifies us. Being a Scythian, being a Jew, being a Greek, being a, uh, uh, a circumcised or uncircumcised, being a slave or being free, being a sinful, indulgent person or a pretty pure person. <laughs> what unites us together? God and his love. And his love is that he sent Jesus for you. So, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, and as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all, what? Unified? In the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. With that in mind, a Christian living seems pretty simple. Keep your hearts on eyes and mind on things above where Christ is. You are in Christ. So may your hearts be devoted towards Christ, not towards self, not towards indulging and comforting yourself in the earthly way. He goes on to a little deeper, goes into detail. He says, for the Christian household. This is for all the Christians, but here's for the Christian household. What does family look like with being in Christ? It says, wives, submit to your husbands as it is fitting to the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Wives, submit to your husbands. Ephesians 5 is a great one. It goes a little longer than that because out of reverence for Christ, submit to one another, then wives, submit to you. So it's all about being in Christ. And as you're in Christ, it's an easy thing to be able to say, I'm here. I'm here for my spouse. I'm here for my wife. I'm here for my husband. Children, obey your parents and everything, for this pleases the Lord. Respect authority. Honor your father and your mother. Fathers, do not embitter your children, or they will become discouraged. Slaves, obey your earthly masters in everything, and do it not only when, when their eye is on you and to win their favor, but with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. I want to just put a little bit of an understanding there. Slaves aren't the slaves that a lot of times we think of. Slaves were actually workers for their masters. They're called slaves because they were owned, but they were of the household. It says right here, rules for Christian households. They were of the household of the master. And that's why Jesus uses it so often, because he's talking about the father and us being slaves, servants of the father. And so he's talking about this household, and it wasn't this harsh whipping and this brutal kind of act. No, it was servants of the household, slaves with a master. Number tw uh, Verse 23, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, because your heart is in Christ, as working for the Lord, not for men. 
since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Anyone who does wrong will be, be, will be repaid for his wrong. And there is no favoritism. There's just unity. Everything we do, our vocation, father, mother, wife, husband, children, worker, whatever you do, do it as you're serving the Lord because that's what you're doing. Your heart is on things above. Your eyes, your mind are on the people around you, sure, and the things of, of what you're going to accomplish, but may you glorify God. May your heart be devoted for Christ and not just to be recognized by men. Those who do wrong, those who are tempted in sin, yet there's consequences to that. <laughs> we all know that. And so this day, may we celebrate once again that we've been clothed in Christ with compassion and kindness of what we've received from God. And I pray that our cup overflows today, that it goes to others, impacting others, and they get to see our heart. And our heart isn't about Steve or filling your name. Your heart isn't about what I can do for my life so I can be seen. No, my heart is devoted today so that people see Christ in me, for me, and overflowing from me because he's over, overfilled my cup with grace and mercy this day, compassion, kindness, and love. He's unified us all together to serve him and him alone. Have a blessed day being the heart of Christ, serving Christ alone. Have a blessed day.